I I have to look it up or something like that. Um, it's okay uh, if you don't know. Yeah. I'm just asking. Uh, yeah, no, you know, it's, I should know. Uh, getting all these new pictures when I do this. No. Anyway, this this woman, she's she's big on the West Coast. And now now I'm I'm curious. I wanna I wanna see myself. Um, uh, where is it? I don't want to take take time away, but okay. don't worry. Anyway, we can get that information later. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's on that Twitch thing. She's on the Twitch thing. That's so cool. Well, let me say your introduction because we kind of skipped past it. Meaning, I okay. can... Ziggy. He has appeared. Ziggy Susser has appeared in the documentary Good Timing, streaming on the Peacock Channel with Joe Firestone. And the segment, his segment was featured on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Isn't that cool, you guys? He won this year's funniest Jewish comic in New York City. And he appears in clubs in and around the New York area. So that's who Ziggy is. He's also my personal friend and he's a strong supporter of other people. He's one of the kindest, he's a mensch. You should support this guy. I've had a lot of people on. Most of them I don't know, like I know Ziggy. We talk very frequently, you know, and when I'm in New York, we like to go have a knish. I don't know what to say. We like to eat. <laughs> right, right, right. Right, so, right, yeah. yeah. It's a, I love him. He lives in Greenwich Village. Let me tell you everything I know about him. He never likes to say an unkind thing to or about anybody. He'd rather take it in the gut than hurt somebody's feelings. And I love Ziggy because he's a lot like me. But when push comes to shove, <laughs> we both have, we do can step up to the plate if we have to. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. Now that's very sweet. That's very sweet. Uh, I, I love when you're in New York because we get to get together and eat and schmooze and all that kind of stuff. So it's cool. And instead of Greenwich Village, we live in the East Village. The East Village. Oh, oh not, not a big difference, but whatever, you know. So you got Greenwich Village and then off to the east of it is East Village? Yeah, the Greenwich, Greenwich Village would be in the west of, uh, uh, you know, of the city and I'm on the east, east what they call the East Village. Wow. Uh, do you remember where, you know, um, do you remember where Steve Marshall lives? Yes. Yeah, so in that area where Steve Marshall lives and, and the Strand Bookstore and all that kind of stuff. Got it. It doesn't seem like it's that very far apart down there. It probably no. comes from the V. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but uh, they're 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 snooty and we're low class, so that's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I just looked up the person's name who's going to host, and I now I forgot it. I know the last name is Monahan, um, something Monahan, uh, Jackie yeah, Monahan. Her. Jackie Monahan. Jackie oh, Monahan. I love her. She's great. She's great. Jackie Mo show on the KO Comedy. So They're that's married. cool. So I'm, I'll meet a lot of new people, and I hope uh, I hope it leads somewhere because you know, I, you know, uh, whatever. If it's a West Coast person, I don't have to bring guests. So <laughs> I can yeah. be I can be on Zoom shows without having to bring anybody, which is always a problem and everything. Totally. Well, I'll be there to listen to you. Thanks. Thanks. You consider me your guest, even though you don't need one. You got one. Right. Good. Thank you. Thank you. You're my plus one. Yeah. Tell us about your childhood. Remind me where you were born and raised and when you became funny and your whole life and into comedy. I was born in Brooklyn Women's Hospital. So that's why I'm a little mixed up. Um, <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, uh, some things, you know, some. Anyway, my parents were Holocaust survivors. And, you know, we lived in Brooklyn and, uh, you know, my relatives lived in the same area. So, you know, whatever. Uh, it was like a little shtetl or, you know, whatever. Anyway, um, and uh, it was nice. It was nice. You know, we were poor. But, you know, when you're a kid, you don't know you're poor. Uh, my father worked very hard. Um, what did and, he do? Uh, in the beginning, he was a, an, an iron worker. Like he worked, you know, in very hot places, making metal, making iron. Um, it was really tough. We, I, I think he worked like six days a week and eventually he saved pennies. He saved up and, and ended up buying a laundry. He bought a laundromat 
and uh, and he worked there. My mother worked with him. And when I got a little older, I, I worked there a little. Um, and we were washing people's clothes, you know. Um, and uh, uh, I didn't like it, but what, whatever, you know, it is what it is. And he worked, like I said, he worked six days a week. Um, and I went to, uh, you know, I, I, I went, I don't know, I, I went to kindergarten. I went to a public school kindergarten. I'm just going to tell you a quick story. Um, my mother always picked me up every day and everything like that. And one day she was late and, uh, and I don't know what was wrong with me, but I just took off, you know, looking for something. I left the school and nobody noticed, nobody cared. And, um, I, luckily I ended up going to a policeman, like in those days, policemen would be, policemen would be, you know, in the middle of the street to cross, you know, to traffic and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, the I, I guess I didn't know my address or, or anything, but I somehow knew my father's laundromat and he brought it to my father's laundromat. And, um, you know, my mother was probably hysterical because she probably got to the school late, didn't know where I was. And, uh, you know, probably thought I was kidding or who knows what, but it, it got me to the laundromat. This is totally not funny, but this is what's coming to my mind anyway. So that, and that, that's my upbringing. So uh, anyway, and then, then, as I was kindergarten, then I went to like a Hebrew day school called Kinneret for a few years. Then I went to Yeshiva for a few years in, in Crown Heights, Crown Heights Yeshiva. And then I went to Stuyvesant High School, which is supposed to be for smart people. So I must have fooled them. Um, and, then, and then I went to Brooklyn College um, and I went through, a, 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 you know, and my mother died when I was in, uh, the senior year of my high school year. Um, so that was tough. Um, and- oh, she passed uh, away so early. Yeah, I was only 17. I was only 17. So that was a that was very big because I was, you know, extremely close to her and, you know, whatever. It was, you know, it really knocked me for a loop and didn't have any ambition after that and stuff like that and almost flunked out of college, whatever. And here I come from Stuyvesant, which is like, you know, one of the top schools maybe the top school in the city. Um, anyway, but, um, you know, I became a teacher to keep out of Vietnam. You know, I, I, I didn't want to be drafted and stuff like that. Um, but I wasn't, you know, what very you good. Teach? I taught uh, third and fourth grades. I, I, I only lasted like two years. I, I wasn't very good at it and stuff like that. Um, so I couldn't keep, you know, I, I couldn't discipline the kids, you know, I, I you know, I, I, I you know, I, I I say that, and it's true. The the only thing I learned from teaching is that I could scream. <laughs> I, never, I never knew I could scream. You know, like I would never scream at anybody. I've never raised my voice. But sometimes these kids would get to me, and 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 well, the noise in the classroom would be so loud. I'd have to scream just for them to hear me. You know, so I was a terrible teacher, but. You know, I, you know, they, they, they say, you know, you learn more from your kids than the kids learn from you. And I, in my case, it was totally true. They learned nothing from me and I learned I could scream. So I don't know, I guess it was even. Um, but anyway, and then I, then I moved on to a few jobs after that. Um, and I ended up taking a, a federal test, a civil service test. And it was between working at, at the airport, I remember, or working for social security. And the airport was working like at night, you know, like late at night, middle of the night. So I picked Social Security and I stayed there for almost 35 years, you know, it was the same job. I never, you know, put in to go. Well, I, I once, I once, I once put in for, you know, a, a different job. Like I was a claims representative and I once put in for a job to be a field representative, which meant to go out into the field to, for people who couldn't come into the office and take their applications in their homes and stuff like that. And I would have gotten it, except that the person they asked for a reference, like the, the boss wasn't there, so the next person. And I did something really stupid one day. Like, like I, I, you know, I, I, I got to work and I didn't have time to shave. So when I got to work, you know, I, I shaved in the bathroom and, and, and it was already nine o'clock. I, I shouldn't have been doing that. And that assistant manager walked in and, and said, what are you doing? You know, and I said, I'm shaving. It was the stupidest thing. And of course, he's the one they called for the reference, you know, to, uh, you know, 
to, to, if I should be a field representative for another office. And um, he gave me a, I heard later, I didn't realize this till years later, but someone told me he gave me a bad reference and stuff like that. Oh, like okay. I, he, he never did anything to me in the office, but I guess it always bothered him. And he finally gave it to me, you know, so I didn't get the, the other job. And maybe I wouldn't have liked the other job. I don't know, but that was the only time I put in for something in 35 years. And, 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 and you know, I, I tell this, this story, where um, I interviewed this woman um, who told me she worked at a Whole Foods. This is, you know, a true story. And um, and I said I used to go to the one on Houston Street in in Manhattan. I, I love their bread pudding. And she said, Oh my God, I made their bread pudding. It was so amazing. I I, I said, Why did they stop selling it? Because I would go and they stop selling it. And she said, Not enough people were buying it. And that's the most exciting thing that happened to me in 35 years in social security, to meet the person that made bread pudding in the Whole Foods. <laughs> anyway, um, so it's not the most exciting job, but you know, whatever. Um, you know, I, you know, I, I, I never had a lot of ambition, you know, like I, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I think had my mother lived, maybe I would have become a doctor. Like, you know, that's what she wanted me to be or whatever. But, um, you know, when she died, it's like, you know, I had no direction. So I just, you know, did something. And I was lucky I ended up in Social Security because, you know, we didn't get paid a lot, um, but we have a pension, you know. So nowadays that's very rare. So it's, it, 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 it worked out okay. And I have some friends that I'm still in touch with from Social Security. And to perform at clubs, I need bringers. So it's <laughs> good, good to have those friends. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so it, it, it worked out. It worked out, you know. Can you tell the story about how you met your wife and then re, re met her? And then, and then what? Didn't you meet your wife long before you got to date her? Uh, was it, say it again, say it again, say it again. Can you tell us the story, how you met your wife really early on and then you met her, and you realized you met her long before or something? Was there a story? Well, well yes and no. I mean, um, during the summers, uh, my family would go to Rockaway Beach, uh, you know, the sand, the surf, swimming. I loved it at the summer. Those were the best, you know, times of my life. Um, and it, it turned out, I found out later that my wife had been to Rockaway Beach also as a kid. So it's very possible we crossed paths, but never knew that. Um, but when I really met her was, a, I took an adult ed class at the new, it's called the New School for Social Research. Um, and um, I, I took a comedy class. It, it was like the history of TV comedy. And, uh, and, and as Specifically, like, remember, you Sid Cedars, your show of shows, they, they did a lot about that. Anyway, so she was in that class. I was in the class. Um, she sat towards the front with a friend. She always had a friend and I sat towards the back. It was like in a big auditorium. And right away, I, w I was smitten. I thought she was like the cutest, you know, person. You know, I had to meet her and stuff. Um, but she would always be with this friend. So, you know, every class, like I would move a little closer to her, like my seat a little closer to her and, uh, uh, you know, from the back and stuff like that. And the last class, I sat right behind her, directly behind her. And I still didn't have the guts to say anything. Oh. So um, we, you know, it was the last class, everybody leaves and I'm on the street, you know, following her stalking her you could say in, in modern terms um and again she's with that friend walking and i knew that you know this is it this could be the very last time i see her and i see her, she's they're going towards a train station so the whole time i'm building up courage to talk to her so i finally tapped her on the shoulder she turned around and i had i i never thought about what i would say it never occurred to me to think, you know, I have no game. I, you know, you know, I, the whole time I was thinking about, I got to do it, I got to do it. And she, and she turns around and I, and I said goodbye. I didn't say, <laughs> I didn't say hello. I didn't say my name. I didn't ask her her name. I said goodbye. Um, what an idiot. I, I was so embarrassed. I, I, I just, I just kept walking because I felt she had to think I'm the biggest idiot in the world. Who says goodbye? You know? <laughs> So I just kept walking. I wanted to be struck by lightning right then and there, kill me, you know, whatever, obliterate me. I just kept walking. And, and I, I thought I was the stupidest person in the world. And, you know, I just wanted to go home and like bury myself under the covers, never come out. 
But anyway, the next semester came and, uh, and I go back, back to school and, and I have two thoughts. One, I hope I don't see her <laughs> so embarrassed. And the other thought is I hope I do see her. So maybe, you know, there's a chance, you know, whatever. And sure enough, she was there. And um, when she noticed me and I saw she didn't run away, I knew <laughs> I knew I could approach her, you know. So you know, it, you know so I go up to her and I say, you know, like hello, I'm the guy who said goodbye. You know, I mean, what kind of you know? But um, you know, but 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 you know, we spoke for a little while. Um, I asked for her phone number, you know, because we, you know, it was okay. But um, she, she ended up. She ended up giving me, she told me later, I didn't know, she gave me a phone number, but she wouldn't give me her phone her number. Like she had one of those princess phones. So she like still didn't trust me because she thought maybe I'm crazy, you know, who says goodbye? So she gave me the home phone so that her mother would pick up first. <laughs> and like, you know, I'd have to go through her before I could get to, to, to her daughter. Um, but, uh, you, know, and, you know, anyway, um, uh, you know, but eventually we spoke and, and we went out and I made a, a great first impression on the first date. Um, we went to this like Greenwich Village uh, restaurant and they had like, you know, a musician would come on at like eight o'clock or something like that. And, you know, you had to pay, I don't know what it was, 20 bucks for the musician. So we we met at like, I don't know what time, let's say six, 6.30, you know, a talk, we were having a great time. And we left like, so, so, so we, you know, I asked for the check at like five to eight, because the musician comes on at eight, and they give me the check, like like whatever, a few minutes after eight, and they put on the twenty dollar music charge, and I didn't even hear the music. You know, we were just, you know, we were leaving now. I felt really bad, so there I am arguing over this thing, and I'm trying to make an impression. My first date, you know, why are you charging me for the music charge? You know, we didn't hear any music, so <laughs> I'm surprised she went out with me a second time, but luckily she did. But but I I made other faux pas. I I once oh, I was horrible. I once went on a date with her, and I don't know what came over me. And I said, you know, I think we should go Dutch. <laughs> what what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? You know, it was terrible. But luckily, she stuck stuck with me. And and now we've been married like forty years, forty years, which is amazing. Oh. We have two great kids. I have a, 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 a we have a granddaughter uh, who's just over a little over a year old. Um, Unfortunately, they live, the, my son and, and, and his wife and, and, and my granddaughter live in North Carolina, so we don't see them that much. But every now and then he'll FaceTime uh, me. As a matter of fact, you know, yesterday, right before Danny Detchy's show, all of a sudden, you know, I see he's FaceTiming me with my granddaughter. And luckily it was before the show, so I was able to see her and talk to her and all that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, so that's nice to at least FaceTime and hopefully we'll see, we'll see them soon and everything. But she's cute. She's cute. Aww. So as we wrap it up, because I'm doing four of these today, so I'm trying to keep them to about 30 minutes. Okay. What I'd like you to do is tell everybody what you're trying to accomplish. Like, what is your passion inside of comedy and where can people follow and help your career? Well, my passion is basically just to make people laugh. You know, I mean, that's it. That's all I want to do. Um, and I want to be able to do it without the stress of having to bring, you know, guests, you know, to the shows. I mean, I know that's the nature of the beast. You know, you, you know, you got to fill those seats, but it's a lot of stress involved with that. So I wish I, I wish that wasn't part of it. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love to be passed at clubs so that, you know, again, you don't have to bring people when you're passed and stuff like that. But again, your name is supposed to bring people. So th th that's always in the ballpark, you know, you, you don't get away from that. I mean, Seinfeld brings people because he's Seinfeld. So it's still, he's, he's at a bringer too, you know, he's bringing it with his name instead of asking individual people. Anyway, um, so Those I just- Those are good thoughts. Make... Those are really good thoughts and that's true. It is yeah. very stressful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I just want to perform. I just want to make people happy. Um, I like, you know, the, comedic community, a lot of really nice people uh, that I've met. Um, and I'm retired from Social Security. So, um, so and with the pandemic, it's given me a whole life, where, you know, which is really great. Um, and, uh, and I guess people could follow me on Facebook. 
I mean, I, I have a Twitter account, I have an Instagram, I'm on TikTok, but I don't do those things. You know, <laughs> I have them, but you know, I, I hardly go on. Even Facebook, I don't know what ha- what came over me, but I got tired of Facebook too, and I hardly go on. I'm 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 like. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the anti-comic. I'm doing everything not to promote myself. It's horrible. I don't do anything. You know, I, people can't find me. I don't, and I don't put stuff, you know, I'll put on maybe, you know, I'm doing a show or whatever, but uh, I'm not, I'm, you know, whatever. My social, you know, social media skills are not very good. But, but um, so I'm hoping everybody recognizes genius without me having to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like social media is like your coin collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stamps and coins. Yeah, I used to collect those. I used to collect very good, very good. Anyway, so um, I'm there. I, you know, I, I want to perform. I like performing. Um, I, I like, you know, I like, I, unfortunately, you know, I... I, I need a class, like I take classes, I need classes, I, unfortunately, fortunately, to, to, to make me do stuff, you know, so it makes me write because I, you know, have homework to do for the class. And, um, and these classes are taught by great people, you know, you have Chris Murphy, you have Vanessa Hollingshead, you have, you know, Rob Chopper, you have, you know, all these people, Dustin Chafman, Toward classes. Anyway, there's a Karen Berger. There are a million great teachers out there. Um, so you get to be with these greats, you know, who've been doing it for so many years and are so great. So uh, you learn a lot from them, not just about your own set, but about the, the world of comedy. So, um, you know, right now I'm taking classes with Chris Murphy through AHA Broadway, and it's a pleasure. He's, he's a really nice guy and, and so smart and funny. And uh, I'm, I'm so happy to know him. And, and, and he really helped my comedy a lot. He just has great instincts. And uh, I, I, I love him. He's, he's, he's great. And, and the people in the class help us each other. We help each other. It's, it's great, you know? So uh, I recommend that, that stuff. And those classes are so affordable, even for seniors and veterans. Yeah, yeah, they, they specifically want seniors and veterans and they make it really cheap because they aim for that audience and um, and it's it's totally worth it, you know, for, 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 you know, for established comedians who fall into that category and for new people who just want to try it out, you know, it's, it's just a really good organization, AHA Broadway, they do a, a lot of great stuff and, uh, and luckily they have Chris Murphy who's a great teacher. Yeah, I took that class with you last time and yeah. I felt he is very empowering and just got you to relax and try new stuff and not be afraid and not limit or scare you or try to put you in a box. He's just yeah, fabulous. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm going to use the line that you use uh, every now and then. Um, and Chris Murphy told me not to quit my day job. <laughs> 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 too late too but it's too late <laughs> i'm sorry i took your line i'm sorry I took your line, but i did no, right in front of you we use it in totally different ways it's right, 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 right. <laughs> so you're on facebook as ziggy susser that's the main place you're at yeah and ziggy is z-y-g-y which is unique um and i always like to say a lot of times i like to start a set by saying something like um, my, you know, people, they introduced me as Ziggy, so I say my real name is Sigmund, uh, but my parents gave me the nickname Ziggy. Sigmund means victory through protection. Ziggy means should have used protection. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of times I'll start with that. <laughs> I remember when we were on a show and Wendy Liebman was there laughing at your jokes. That was a, that was a highlight. That was a highlight to to have to see that to hear her laughing to see her laughing at my jokes. Wow, wow! I mean, she's one of my heroes. She she's incredible. I love her. Love her. Yes, and, and, and awesome. she loves you too and stuff, which is great. And then tonight you're gonna get to be with DC Benny. How cool is that? I know, I know. I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it. Definitely looking. You forward guys to it. come on to my Facebook or Ziggy's Facebook. KO Comedy has a show tonight, 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. It airs on Twitch on the KO Comedy channel, but also it'll be, I think, on Facebook. But anyway, come to our pages and come watch Ziggy as he does his stuff at right. KO Comedy with Dustin Chapin. 
Right, you can go on Kale Comedy's website, I guess, to get the Zoom link, uh, mm -hmm. or my I have it on my Facebook page, um, whatever. It should be a good show, it should be a good show. Absolutely. Well, thank you for coming on and helping thank me get closer to a thousand interviews. Thank you for asking me. Thank you for having me. And thank you for being my friend. You're welcome. It's going to be a, a four interview day and I can't think of a better way to start it off. Ziggy, thank you so love, much. Love you, Linda. Love you, Ziggy. Bye. 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 Maybe